One of the common questions that come up is how do I implement the clinical use of the ESX basic and advanced setups in a clinical setting? So why don't we take this on a bench top? talk to you about the way I use the ESX system. So the ESX files come in a package of uh, three here. You got three sterilized blister packs. What we do is uh, we arrange these based on the case difficulty level of basic, advanced, and advanced squared. And uh, what we do is we also have uh, 21, 25, and occasional 31 millimeter setups of these. But primarily, we know that the basic cases are going to be 25 millimeter, and setups and uh, advanced cases are going to be uh, 21 millimeter as well as the advanced squared cases. Cases. I'm not going to talk really much about the advanced squared cases here. Let's focus on the basic and advanced. And the basic cases are uh, those cases where a size 15 hand file can easily get to the apex. So primarily your anterior and premolar cases. Your molar cases are going to be for the most part uh, advanced cases because there's always one tough canal inside the tooth that is going to give you a hard time for a 15 to get down easily like an MB2 or something like that. So the way I have uh, these categorized here uh, in our office is that the assistant, based on the tooth that we're going to be dealing with, whether it's an anterior or a premolar, is going to basically put a 25 millimeter setup of a size 8 and 10 hand file and an expediter in this sponge uh, that we kind of differentiate color-wise from basic and advanced uh, together. So we start the case like this, do my axis opening, do my size 10 and then a 15, determine that it is and confirm that it is a basic case and then use the uh, expediter to get down and I'm using that on the endosync and uh, you know we are going to use uh, the proper settings to get down to the apex use always I use the memory one to get down here which is a, si a 500 rpm at 0.6 newton centimeter with OTR and as I approach the uh, the working link the estimated working link that I've determined from the radiograph I switch to memory 2, which is 300 RPM, uh, so I, that lower the RPM, and then I basically at that point connect this to the endosync uh, AI, which is the apex locator, and I give live reading. And because I have apical stop on, as soon as I reach the full working length, the file comes to a full stop. I adjust the stopper to get down to the working length that it is to the reference point. Then at that point, then I disconnect the handpiece from the apex locator and I move back up to the original uh, memory one that I have programmed, which is 500 RPM and 0.6 Newton centimeter of torque with the OTR. And then based on the algorithm for ESX, depending on how much engagement I felt from this, I would choose the appropriate size ESX file to complete the case. And that would be the finishing file. So here, let's say I choose a size 35 to complete the case. And then I put the 35 in there and uh, set that at the length that we had. And then basically using OTR with rhythm motion, work my way down to the apex. The key here is to use the ESX file with the, uh, uh, with the brush. Uh, so we do rhythm motion of three strokes to engagement, having the OTR at 0.6 to kind of kick in if needed. But the goal here is to do three, to, three strokes to engagement, which is the rhythm motion, remove the file, wipe it, do the irrigation and until this file is down. That's basically for the basic cases. For advanced cases, all I do is uh, we start the case like this. With, so we have the three uh, small stiff files with Brassler, which is this, the file 8, uh, 10, and 15. And then this series of the expediter, which is the 1505, with the two scout files, which is the 1504 and 1502. Now, in all, almost all of the advanced cases, I always also recommend the use of the uh, orifice opener. So the orifice opener is really not a file per se, so this would be really, because you could use a gaze glidden if you want, whatever you want to do an orifice opening, but the ASX orifice opener, which is a size 20 and 08 taper, is a pretty handy one. It does do the job of like three gaze gliddens all in one file, so it's pretty efficient. So the goal here is to follow this method of you go with a little bit of hand instrumentation and then you use the orifice opener. The goal is to have straight line access to the coronal one half of the root. So then what's left is the apical one half of the root, which you always remember you want to have a stainless steel hand file to uh, 
create a path for you which you then follow. For the apical one half, you have these three files of the same tip, which is a 1505, 1504, and a 1502, to create what I call hybridization of tapers. Hybridization of tapers is using the same tip size with different tapers. And you do the rhythm motion from a 1505, so you do one, two, three, out, wipe, and then go to 1504, one, two, three, out, wipe, and then the 1502, which would be one, two, three, out, wipe. And generally, at this point, your 1502 would be right down at the apex already. And what you have done is you've connected the handpiece to the uh, EndoSync AI, and you measure the working length with this 1502 uh, at the same time. This is what I call hybridization of taper of one cycle when you come down. Occasionally, if you have a pretty tough tooth, what you should do is you do a little bit more hand instrumentation, and I would recommend that you move back again to the beginning of this cycle. So you do 1505 three strokes, and then 1504 three strokes, and then the second cycle, very likely you're gonna be already down at the end. Uh, so, there's basically a couple of cycles of this fifth hybridization of tapers. You should be able to measure your working length using your 1502. And then once you have this 1502 scout measuring your working length, you capture the analog reading by moving the stopper, and then you will follow up with your uh, ESX uh, finishing file, whatever size that is here again. We're going to do a 35. So, you know, we don't count the orifice opener. So, this ends up being pretty much four files for your advanced cases, which is uh, very helpful and very good. Just the key is the understanding that you need to use a little bit of hand filing to create a path uh, and then work your way down with these hybridization of tapers and a finishing file to complete the case. And uh, that's pretty much it. So the difference between the um, um, basic advanced and then now the advanced squared cases is the advanced squared is what I use as traditional um, sequence of sizes 20 through 40 in a crown down fashion. What you could do is you could also uh, replace, if you have a very curved and a difficult case, you could use some of these control flex files, which are heat treated files, to replace your sizes 20, 25, and 30 uh, ESX or endo sequence. You could replace those with these control flex files that are uh, heat treated, that are very flexible. As you can see, uh, they kind of retain um, their shape a little bit. And that gives you this kind of a format. And the goal here is to use them in a crown down fashion. So once again, you do rhythm motion of three strokes of 40, three strokes of 35, three strokes of 30, three strokes of 25, and three strokes of 20. And this is uh, the path that you work until you get down to the apex. And you can do this cycle over and over again until you get down to the end. The goal also is to give yourself a couple of hand files, obviously, to create a path with a stainless steel uh, instrument before you follow and enlarge that path very quickly with your uh, rotary files. So uh, this is basically the setup that I have at the office. Let's quickly talk about sterilization. Uh, these files come pre-sterilized. ESX files are pre-sterilized. And you basically take them out of these blister packs and put them in here. Uh, the goal here is that on the advanced cases, my recommendation is to only use it once. Because we don't use the, the, the term that has been used is how many times do you use a file per case. Well, a case is a very nebulous concept. You could have a single rooted anterior tooth, uh, or you could have a very tough four canal molar. So a per case is not really a, the right way of measuring file use. It should be per canal. And my recommendation is to not use your files more than uh, three canals. So that means that pretty much all molars, because they're three or four canals, you're gonna end up using them only once. But for anterior teeth and premolars that are fairly easy at times, you know, you have, I mean, the manufacturer clearly wants you guys to use these files only once. And frankly, if all things are equal and the costs were low, using them once is the only rational thing to do because it's the safest way of using them. But I can understand the cost could be high for in some areas. In those cases, I would say that make sure that you don't use them for more than three canals. Uh, so, which means that you could probably re-sterilize it for an easy anterior tooth a couple of times, but then dump them after that. So what we do is we use uh, these sponges that are not marked so we know that in a tough case I would just 
toss this out. But in easy cases, what happens is this gets marked once, so it gets sterilized separately, obviously not inside the sponge, uh, with this, uh, and then the sponge gets sterilized and it gets put back on here like that. And then if I see a mark on the uh, on here, then I know that I could use this one more time only and then thro uh, throw it out. Uh, so that's what I do uh, clinically in the office and uh, this helps reduce the confusion for the assistants as well so they don't have to deal with this too much. So how do I get the finishing files on the ESX? Well these are all the basic setup for uh, to get down to a finishing file. Then we have another little reservoir where we have all the finishing files that we just pull from and use and then this is how it ends up being at the end. Um, the finishing files the same way. They can uh, should only really be used in three canals and therefore if you are getting uh, you know if on a molar just toss them out again it's all for the sake of safety and that's pretty much it i hope this was helpful to you and you understand how i do things remember this guy the ex uh, the orifice opener is really handy for your uh, access portion of your cases but you can see here is that most of your basic cases are completed with two ESX files and most of your advanced cases end up being uh, about four ESX files and then the RFS opener. So that's, uh, that's basically it. I hope it was helpful to you.